got my iced coffee, and I got my lunch. Just kidding, it's not a lunch. It is the inoculant. So I've been storing the inoculant in my house because it's supposed to be below like 68 degrees or something, which my house isn't exactly 68 degrees, but we put it in these cool packs whenever we bring it out here in the heat. And uh, so it's not my lunch, it's inoculant. Don't try to eat it. Meet the Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. We are getting into some of the green stuff down here at the bottom. That's some good corn. So this, uh, this corn could get on a second year on some of this stuff. This second year actually put on some corn. Um, and it's still standing tall, still green, but we're chopping it because it's going to blend in with the hills that are browning up. So it's still another foot above the top of my hand. I mean, it's between 9 and 10 feet, I guess I'd say. So we um, couldn't make a full down row on one truck. So we're cutting out a little path in here for me to come pull up and let Nathan get out. So the truck's gonna be pulled up into that little slot and then I'll slide in here. We'll go forwards and then uh, he'll have to back around and get out. Okay, since we have five people at the moment, Dad's been, so he placed some, uh, I think those are straw. Yeah, straw bales over there. Also up on a little low spot on the wall. And then he's cleaning out some of the area for dirt. I'm guessing we'll put a few more bales on this side. But that's nice to have the extra person and not expect the push guy to do it or have to stop for lunch and do it or something. So it's been, a, uh, it's been an effective morning. Uh, it is basically noon right now, 11.55. So I just dropped off Blair. She was riding with me. And then I think our cousin is riding with Greg. This field's got a lot of terraces. But it's feeling really good. that drone video. Uh, day three of corn silage harvest is underway here this morning and uh, we're hoping to get the air conditioner of the 5830 worked on here in the heat of the afternoon. That way we don't have to run all of our equipment when it's 105. Uh, and then hopefully we'll get going again later this afternoon and, and into the evening. And then it should only be you know, a couple more days after that of, of corn silage. Uh, we've still got all of our sorghum silage to put up, but uh, we, we've we got, I would say we're definitely over half done with corn silage because uh, it's it's tonning out well enough that uh, we'll, we'll be able to pick quite a bit of our corn. We like to um, kind of have it be flexible of how much we're going to chop and how much we're going to pick. I think it, it rained good enough and, and the corn grew well enough that uh, we're not going to have to chop as many acres as we originally thought. We'll be able to combine a few more acres. Dad spent the uh, morning putting bales up here uh, at the trench so that we can bring the trench out. It's, it's going to gonna overflow our, our capacity so we're going to Bring it out a little bit.
Okay, got one side all picked up of the air equip healer. Gonna move to the other side. We got another group of cows to catch with this thing. This has two people, but you can do it with one. So after you fold up the wings and strap them on, uh, you just bring the wheels right back on over and you attach them with this pin. Pretty simple and easy. Doesn't take more than a minute per wheel. Even went a little higher than they would need to go. And uh, then just hook up the truck. Okay, you can see that front end raising. So that two jacks in the front raising up that front uh, to where you can back a pickup right underneath it. So I'm letting the back down now after uh, we took the wheels off. So let the back down first so that plug hits the ground. And then I'll, uh, I'll let the front down after I move the pickup. And then we'll undo the four yellow straps and then it'll swing out. So setting up is just as fast as taking it down. Might be faster. I see a problem with this pond. Banks are all the way up here. That has gone down like two feet in the month of July. I mean, it went down a lot. All that crusted area was water in June. And it's not that they drank it down, that's from evaporation. You can smell that pond. You can smell that uh, just green on the top of it. And you can smell how it's drying out these outside. Anyways. That's one of the reasons we'll be moving the cows home. We got the air peeler set up in the corner. Cows are over on that hill. I was gonna lock them into this paddock, but I don't really want them drinking out of this pond, but they do need to be in this paddock whenever we try to catch them over there. So I'm gonna have to move them kind of the day of a little bit. I've been wanting to get this air peeler set up in a cool morning for like, 10 days, you can ask Evan. I mean, he, every day I tell him, oh, I hope to get that AeroQuip he, uh, healer moved over from Miller 2 to Miller 1. Never have gotten it in the morning, so we moved it at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, took us, I think, I'll look up the time of how long it took us, though, to both tear down and set back up again. Okay, now this Milo is starting to head out. Right there, you can see it. It does not have much left in the tank, so it really needs rain. I do not have, um, it's not gonna perform as well as the corn, uh, which we were kind of, it was kind of a low on Milo acres year for us anyways. So we're glad for all the corn we planted instead of Milo based on the weather and the planting dates. So there's already one load there and there's another load. So Evan's gonna have two loads to push up right from the second he starts. I'm gonna get this hooked on to the rake. We had to bring it home from the field. We were gonna leave it over there till we bailed. But our rake tractor is having some, it's throwing some codes. So that 7130 is not going to be able to rake this uh, millet. And we'll probably just use the M7 for all three haying phases. got the rotary rake here hooked up for the millet hay. Uh, it's like 55 acres. It's going to need to be raked real early in the morning because it's so dry that it could probably have been raked um, probably like yesterday. The day before that was Sunday, so I mean, this, this is as good a day as any. Um, and then we got a lot of silage chopped this morning. I wouldn't trade the silage that we got put up to have that hay up. As far as I know, but it did feel pretty crispy when I when I felt it uh, today. The other thing I was gonna do, check to see if we still got net wrap in there. It's upside down, but you can see we got Tamatech net wrap locked away in there. So glad we got that because I'm sure we'll go through at least one uh, roll tomorrow. 
And let's see, we got a good stack of them left still. We got to do third cutting of alfalfa and uh, 55 acres of millet. Hopefully we use up all that stuff making bales the rest of the summer. It means we got a lot of hay left. Came inside, fill up this water jug uh, just with ice. And... Then before I left, I realized when I was sitting here eating a snack, that I drank half the water jug before even going out outside. So I guess I'll top it off. Well, I was gonna try to get my load loaded, um, but then I found out Nathan is gonna go start the pivot. So he's gonna go start the pivot and I'll take his truck. Okay, the pile's getting pretty big and uh, we're running into some green corn on this field. This is really good stuff. It's almost hard not to stop and be like, oh, I guess we should pick it. It's, it's still green. So I think we're gonna switch fields in the morning go back to our big pivot slash not a pivot because we didn't water anything with it. It's almost 7 p.m. It might be after 7, but it's been a really good day of chopping, besides it being real hot. Okay, I'm getting my feet loaded. Greg's dumping. Evan's still pushing. I'm going to send Evan home after I get my feet loaded here. Another day, winding down. Brooke Anna came out to ride with me, along with Brighton. But we'll get to see them here. 7.30 p.m. and it's still 102 degrees outside, so that's fun. <laughs> but at least the sun is not high in the sky. The sun's setting, so it's not so much direct sunlight, but it's still hot. Hey, Brighton. Are you excited to ride in the truck? Where are you going? Maybe you're just excited to run around. She's leaving. <laughs> Bye. Have a good time. <laughs> you coming? Come here. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> you got corn? You got corn? Can you say corn? Corn. So this is the back side of what dad put extended the wall here of the silo we've done this before with you know a couple bales but i really like the way it looks with with all five of them there they make it as high as this concrete part we'll probably end up bringing this all the way up above that concrete once we get the cane silage in there too are we are we right in right it's almost bedtime i think How's it going in the 107 degrees today? Feeling pretty good when you're an extra human being you're carrying around. Pretty great. Yeah. Thankfully, thankfully Brighton's always in a good mood, right? Yeah. Well, it's gotten significantly cooler, so we are still chopping. It's nine, shortly after nine o'clock, I think. It's 8.59, so it definitely gets dark earlier than it did during wheat harvest, uh, just being a month, month later. Ooh, 
of my lights on here. Okay, one last dump in the dark here. Checking the pivot. Still going. Which light is the pivot and which is the moon? That is the question.